The Amazing Digital Circus Episode 2 was amazing. Glitch is back at it again with another episode following their smash hit pilot, and boy did they deliver. Answering a lot of questions about the series, while also exploring a bit more of the strange world the characters find themselves in. In this video, we're going to be recapping and discussing The Amazing Digital Circus Episode 2. So, spoilers for The Amazing Digital Circus Episode 2, no shit. The episode starts with Pomni abstracting, which is basically computer land for dying, if you forgot. And no one in the entire circus cares. She then wakes up, revealing that it was a stress nightmare, and I'm still not sure why people sleep in the digital world, but whatever, that's okay. She wakes up, and Ragatha greets her. Pomni still looks like the thousand yard stare meme, and then they go to see Kane's adventure idea. Kane says they gotta go to the Candy Kingdom because they got robbed of all their maple syrup, which is really valuable to them because they're made of candy. It, it starts slow, I promise it gets better. Zubal says, no, I don't wanna do that, and walks away. And then Kane shoves the rest of the crew through a bubblegum Rick and Morty style portal. Cut to them riding a wagon with this palindrome looking ass gummy wormifant. And they arrive at the kingdom. The queen's like, goddamn Australian gummy crocodiles took my syrup truck. I need you to go get him. Oh, and also there's this funny moment that confirms the NPCs think Kane is God, so there's that. The princess lady gives them a truck to chase the bandit and the key to the city in case they need to get back in. They drive off in pursuit of the bandits, and then we get a truck chase scene where Jax throws Pomni out the truck and she ends up on top of the other one. A lot of nonsensical cartoon battle hijinks later, most of the crew crashes into a river of fudge, and Pomni and the leader gummy gator bandit get glitched out of the map and end up in what looks like a video game asset development room. If some of you are like me, overweight nerds, and like to mod video games and break them, you might have seen these rooms, and they have like one of each item and character in the game. They're for development purposes. The lizard man examines his surroundings and sees that all the people in the world he's familiar with are down here. Except they aren't really them. A look of confusion as he looks at frozen duplicates of familiar faces and a look of shock as he sees his own. I can't really explain why this scene is so effective. You just gotta watch it for yourself. I gotta say that this is where the episode starts to get really good. To be honest, I wasn't even gonna review it and wasn't really into it up until this point. It's at this point that Pomni falls down there too, and the lizard man asks why Pomni or her crew aren't in the asset pack. Gator Guy has an existential crisis and asks Pomni to tell him exactly what he is. And then it cuts to the other members of the team floating on the truck in the fudge river before we get to know. <clears throat> They almost get eaten by a fudge monster, but then they say they aren't candy, and the monster doesn't. They also learn that he eats anything that is candy, regardless of whether or not it's sentient, and was exiled from the kingdom for eating too many people. He's one of my favorite characters in the episode. If you knew what I did in my free time, more, oh, you'd be sickened. <laughs> Me too, buddy. The bandits crash into the river as well, and we cut to Pomni planning to escape the development room. It's evident that Pomni told Lizarb the nature of his existence, and he's not too happy about it. He says that his whole life being fake means that none of it really matters. Pomni tries to appeal to him, saying regardless of how real things are or aren't, he has people in that world that he cares about, and they care about him. They go back and forth a bit, and she convinces Lizarb to leave the development room with her by offering him a chance to live with her in the circus. Alright, I'll leave. They get out by glitching the truck's collision box, and then fly through the teapot dimension, which is also a map in every video game for very important development reasons. Then we cut to the other characters floating on the fudge monster's back, and Pomni and Lizarb fly from out of the sky and skull the truck into the back of the fudge monster's head. Everyone reunites and has big hugs. Turns out, the truck from the dev room is also full of syrup, so there's enough for everyone. They return to the kingdom, complete the quest, leave the candy dimension, and Jax, before leaving, drops that he left the gate open so Fudge could come back and eat everyone, giving us nice closure. Back in the circus, Kane spots the gummy lizard boy and immediately kills him. Omni made her first friend in the circus, and the second Kane saw him, he turned him into fucking confetti. 10 out of 10, even though I saw it coming. He says he had to do it in order to not mix up the NPCs and real people in a very ominous manner. To end off the episode, Ragatha invites Pomni to Kofmo's funeral, and they share stories about his life. And Pomni looks reflective, sad, yet grateful. Okay, commentary time. First off, this wasn't a complete summary.
It was actually intentionally sparse because I just said what I needed to to talk about the show. While funerals aren't typically the happiest of affairs, they do tend to make people think about their lives and the people in it a lot more than they typically do at a McDonald's drive-thru or whatever. I think it's at this moment that Pomni realizes that even though she can't figure out where she came from, and she can't seem to escape reality, if she stays withdrawn, she won't be able to take anything from the experiences she can have. Seeing the group talk about Kofmo and tell stories like they would a real funeral gave gravity to their experiences, even though they were in a game. I think this final scene is at the core of what the episode is trying to say. This episode talks about the nature of reality, what's real and what isn't, and how that in some ways can be kind of subjective, if it even matters at all. It's the reverse of if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, did it happen? While Pomni is right that she's no longer in the real world, no matter how much she wishes that wasn't the case, real or not, her experiences in this digital world will affect her. This isn't just the case for someone stuck in an indie animation dimension like Pomni. Most media isn't quote unquote real. You can't typically hold it in your hand anymore, boomer. And the stories it can tell often didn't actually happen, but it can have a profound impact on the world around us. I'm going on record, I'd bet $20,000 that SpongeBob SquarePants has had more of an impact on the world than that lady operating a DMV desk, but you're still not sure if she's awake, asleep, or dead. If it's not real, but it does have lasting impact on people, does the real matter? Or second question, does the impact make it real? The theme of reality also applies to the notion of sentience. Many people wonder if our sense of self and awareness is real, or just some sort of justification our brain makes for its own actions. This episode addresses that, with Pomni's conversation with Gummy Goo, the lizard man who I refuse to call his real name because it's fucking stupid. Gummy Goo was depressed because none of his life or memories were real, but at the end of the day, he still felt it, so it was real to him. I think that this episode deals with a lot of cool stuff that my brain doesn't have enough wrinkles to explore because I pressed it with a hot iron one time to make it smooth. If I had to be nitpicky, and I'm only doing it because most of the time I was being dick righty, um, one problem that I have with indie animation that reared its head in this in particular is, and, and also, like, I struggle with this in my own projects, so I'm just as guilty, is that it's hard to establish a status quo of what the show is going to be like when episodes are months apart. There is a trade-off though, in that because there's so much more time, I usually see more effort and thought put into each individual episode than traditional network-based schedules for shows, and it seems like the creators from a writing standpoint really get the time to ruminate on their ideas. Because they're forced to. <laughs> Can't go any faster when you're indie. <laughs> I, at least I can't. Fucking at wit's end. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's all I gotta say. If you like this video, you should like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll hit you with a big rock. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Okay, bye.